is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where we are as prepared as we can be for a low sense of disappointment and a background radiation of dull scorn. Because although we had promised some months ago, not promised, maybe mentioned, that we were going to play Ghetto, um, I hadn't actually read the rules to Ghetto. And I thought it could fit all the players, but it really can't. It can fit ten. Uh, they could partner up, but that wouldn't be that much fun, I don't think, to do partners because it's not really. It, they just have to like talk to each other, and that's just, you know, there's already ten players that I would have to deal with, to, or ten teams, and then to have to go through that internal dynamic for each one, that would just be very difficult. So instead, what I just I did was I. Um, did some things with the scores because I want to knock some people out. Not that I really want to, but I, the tournament's got to move on or it's never going to finish, right? If the turn out, tournament just keeps continuing, it doesn't finish. Uh, so we're going with some like, I'm pairing some negative people with high negatives with people with high positives, which could, you know, make a chance for, for sort of knockout. So I've got the next few games planned out, and then when we get down to 10, I, I will promise, I'm going to promise this on my life, unless I'm dead before this happens, and then, you know, you're kind of out of luck. But, you know, you got you got a pretty good chance of me surviving to do this. I live in a, you know, a wealthy country, um, get plenty of good food, no health care to speak of, but I have, I, I'm not, I don't get super sick. I just kind of have a dull background radiation of sickness. So then we'll play, we'll play Ghetto when we get down to 10 and just see how it all shakes out and then hopefully we'll finish this leg eventually and move on with the tournament. I know you're excited and so am I. So what are we going to play instead? We're going to play Labyrinth the Awakening. We played Labyrinth the War and Terror 2001 to a while ago, um, several years ago. But now we're going to do the Awakening and we're going to do the with the War on Terror cards. It, I, I'm just going to kind of be brief here. No, I'm not, but I'm going to try to be brief, and I'm not going to go into all the, the details if you don't know the difference between Labyrinth, The Awakening, and Labyrinth, The War on Terror. Maybe I will. It's kind of the sequel. It's got different cards, but we're going to use all the cards, um, mix them together. I'm mixing the, the ones from the later period of The Awakening with the last half of the deck, the ones from the early period of The Awakening with the first half of the deck. So it's like alternate history starts at 2001, goes to who knows, um, but I do know it's when the deck is gone, and so it should be fun. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to have the game end at victory or do the optional rule where the game ends when the whole deck runs out and then whoever has met the most victory conditions throughout the game wins. I think I'll just have the game end as victory. I think that that will go quicker and I won't have to track a, another score. It'll just be simpler. So let's do that, and let's play right now. All right, here's whose head is on the chopping block. This is Mooney. He's a fan favorite from many people who have been following the tournament, but his, he his head is on the proverbial chopping block because by, by Dancing Bear, she's the one who's holding the chopper or axe um, because he has negative 669 points. I think, is it, if you get negative 750, you're out? Uh, I've... I feel like that was the rule I said. It's been a while since I've done this, so I kind of forgot some things. I don't take notes very well. Um, versus Dancing Bear, who I think is our high scorer right now. Let's take a look at the board. Um, yeah, Dancing Bear, positive 369. So she is going to be the U.S. player who is on top with all the points. And Mooney is going to be our Giotis player who is trying to get something with... Uh, uh, or else die trying and that's where we're gonna go we're gonna deal out and we're gonna play here's our setup let's roll let's pause I just thought you would want to see this tall tall stack of cards this is all the cards in the game the if, if no one meets their victory condition prior to the games end, um, it ends when that tall tall tack of stack of cards is done so there's no there's not going to be any reshuffling of decks or anything like that all right let's roll at first glance, Mooney has a problematic starting hand, but it's actually pretty good. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of USA events. If you're not aware of this game, if you play something for the ops value, 
that uh, is associated with the other side, so we have the United States of America and we have the jihadists, then you have to do the event. It's, it's used in many games. It's used in this game. Um, fortunately for Mooney, these two events aren't going to really do anything, especially if he plays them right now. So it kind of writes itself what he's going to do on his first turn. He's going to use both of these cards for their ops value, which is three. Good. No, no negative side effect due to the events because... No country is at civil war, and there's no discard pile, and that's what they relate to. Um, this one he can get rid of by um, using it for the first plot. If you use it for the plot operation, you don't have to do the event. And this one he can just wait till the end of the turn to play, and it's also not going to do anything then because it has to do with travel for the rest of the turn. If he uses it before the turn's over, or at the end of the turn, it's not going to affect it. So pretty good. Then he's got some nice well, nice-ish cards here. That'll help. And here's what Mooney did. Um, let's take a look at Dancing Bear's starting hand. It's pretty interesting. Uh, she has a card that she wants to play right away because um, it, it won't do anything. You know, again, with the opposing sides event. And then she has this interesting card. I've not played with the Civil War rules from Awakening. Uh, not that they haven't been in play. They just haven't come up in, in my brief test of the game. Um, but this would put Afghanistan into civil war, which does not seem like a, such a bad thing for Dancing Bear. Uh, I mean, it's in, it starts off in Islamist rule, so that's going to move it to poor. I guess we'll go ahead and do that now. Move it to poor, and then a besieged regime. So you can certainly shift it back if Mooney wants to pretty soon, but that's going to, you know, he's going to have to mess around to do that. And then I have to find a Civil War marker. What does that look like? I'll do that off camera. But so we're going to start off the bat with a Civil War right away. Um, there are no forces <laughs> against the, the Taliban there, but uh, so it might be a pretty quick Civil War. All right, I just want to show you that I found the Civil War counter. It was right there uh, before I remove it because Mooney <laughs> already turned it back. Though it did take him his turn, it's going to kind of backfire a little bit on Dancing Bear because her prestige is going all the way down to one, which is painful. But she kind of wasted a turn for, for Mooney because um, really all he did was recruit there and then perform a major jihad. Let's see if she can kind of bring her prestige back up. That's going to be harder because she's hard. It's generally easier to get your prestige up if you're soft, but we'll see. Dancing Bear responded to the loss of prestige by ignoring Afghanistan entirely. Instead, she is stirring up via event uh, some awakening in Egypt and neighboring Sudan. Um, awakening things, awakening things, see how they have pluses on them? They add to rolls. Uh, reactions, see how they have minus on them? They subtract from rolls. Pluses are good for the U.S. Minuses are good for the jihadist. So that's what she's doing. That's going to make her easier to operate in this region for her. And also, night, this is a cool thing about this expansion, Labyrinth, the Awakening. Um, things will happen autonomously in these areas now that they have, you know, some, uh, well, Egypt especially, now that it has a total of plus two Awakening. I think it will get an additional plus one maybe, and then it will just start to improve itself. Um, at least in terms of, from Dancing Bear's perspective, improve itself as, uh, as turns finish, provided those markers stay there. One thing I neglected is that when uh, the convergence rule, and it's, it can be easy to forget, but you should remember because it's something momentous happens, and so that spreads across the world. Uh, when Afghanistan went back to Islamic rule, uh, we rolled on this special new table that came with Labyrinth the Awakening, uh, does that have dates on it? Labyrinth the Awakening? That's the original game. I'll have to look for the Labyrinth the Awakening box and see if there's like a, a date on it. So I can say that when I say the title. Um, you roll on a, a to, to put a reaction if it's Islamist rule or an awakening marker if it shifts to good on a, a random Muslim country. So Turkey now is more predisposed to um, to, to the, the jihadist way of thinking. All right, we just did a round of cards. Um, Mooney is just kind of spreading 
um, these little guerrillas, I want to say guerrillas, what are they, jihadists, around the, the map here. Uh, it's got some cadres where he failed, he was doing some jihadist videos, um, things like that. Uh, Dancing Bear, there was a there was a cell here in Gulf States, that's the word, cell. Um, Dancing Bear spent her turn getting rid of it, so now there's a cadre there, but that did bump up her prestige. She's almost in the medium range, which is you know, pretty, pretty decent. I mean, better than negative one. Uh, let's see here, negative one. She wants to get in here. Very much she'd like to be here, but that's going to be hard to do. Uh, okay, let's move on. Another round of turn saw. Just pretty much a brief game of whack-a-mole. Um, Mooney recruited in Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia. Uh, also moved to move to peace to China. That's going to put the world to soft. So that's a that's going to be a negative one to uh, Dancing Bear's War of Ideas rolls. Um, Dancing Bear got rid of the the cell in Saudi Arabia, though it, re it took her two three cards with U.S. events on them. So that was pretty costly. But she did get her prestige into the medium range. So she might be ready to start going after Egypt, I think. And Egypt should be tested, actually. Um, I think Egypt was a... Uh, let's just test it again. I don't remember if I tested Egypt or not. Yeah, Egypt's a poor country. Okay, so we'll go with that. And then the only other thing, yeah, okay, nothing nothing happened. We're going to go down to our last card. That's going to be Mooney's uh, first plot. He's going to do a plot here. He was hoping to do a plot in a country with some troops. That's not going to happen. Uh, he is going to do some plotting. Dancing Bear is going to have a chance to respond. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any three cards, so she's not going to be able to get rid of any plots. So whatever plot happens is going to go off. Mooney tried to plot in Israel, Pakistan, and China. China was the only one that worked, which is good. You know, with, with those odds, that's not bad to, to get one out of three there. They, were all, they all had to be two or one or less. Um, Dancing Bear can't do anything about it, as I said, so she's going to go ahead and try a war of ideas in Sudan, because she does have that plus one there, uh, maybe get it to good. So she's going to roll that now. There is going to be a minus one to her prestige after this, um, but she figures it's a it's fine use of the card because Jihadist funding can't go up any higher than it already is. So she's going to roll. She's looking for, looks like a five or a six here. She got a three. She'd get a plus one for that. A minus one for that. That's going to be nothing. Not even any eight, I don't think. Let's look at our table here. Yep. So nothing happens except the turn is over. Good start of the turn for Dancing Bear. She played um, Scaff, which let her uh, shift Egypt, which you can see what, what happened. I kind of spoiled the suspense for you, but it let her shift Egypt to a fair ally. And then she got a six on her, her subsequent roll of ideas thing. There was a lot of um, awakening markers there. So she got her first kind of big win in her column, which is Egypt, pulling that over. Three resource country. That's nice. That's three good resources. Um, she just needs, so she's a quarter of the way to this kind of victory right here. Pretty good for Dancing Bear. Uh, for his part, Mooney. Um, has expanded into France. Unfortunately, France was hard. He was hoping it would be soft, which would um, make the global war on terror relations less in favor of Dancing Bear. He's kind of got a rough hand. A lot of, lot of um, U.S. events in here that he has to kind of work around. So we'll see what happens. It's been a really rough turn for Mooney so far. He has so many events that just uh, help Dancing Bear and not really a lot of traction anywhere. Um, and she she was able to play a card Hambali, which gave her even two more cards. And she's got all these threes. She's just got a incredibly strong hand. Um, you know, and even like this negative three here, uh, it's an is Islamic three, um, isn't going to hurt her too much because she's not going to be able to put a reaction marker in Egypt. So, you know, she even gets to cut down on the the damage on that. So she's just got a, a strong hand. He doesn't have such a strong hand. And so he's just kind of trying to set himself up and maybe poke at her a little bit. He is getting some good good traction. He's, he's moved into the United Kingdom, getting himself close to the United States to kind of threaten her there. 
um, also moving down towards Indonesia, trying to flip up a lot of countries um, so that they turn up soft. Chances are they're going to be soft, which is uh, uh, oppositional to what the U.S. is, but she's gotten pretty lucky with her roles. Lots of fives and sixes have come up, so she's not getting that penalty that he's hoping she would have on the global war on terror. Um, she still hasn't really committed any troops, She, except for what, what she started out with here, just kind of doing the war, a war of ideas, and that's been been working working out pretty well for Dancing Bear, much to the chagrin of Mooney's Aqualad. More bad news for Mooney. Uh, Dancing Bear is rolling hot. She just shifted Pakistan to good. Uh, rolled a, a flat six. I mean, you can't do do a lot better than that. Rolling six. If you're the United States of America, that's a great number, and so. That uh, Mooney had a lot of eggs in that basket. It's going to be really hard for him to operate there now. I uh, was really hoping to get those WMDs maybe sweep into the U.S. and threaten her that way. But, you know, that was kind of a shot in the dark. And that shot, um, as many shots in the dark do, miss their target. And that's going to be the end of our second turn and the end of this video, uh, this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Terminal. I'll let you drink in what's going on. It's definitely in Dancing Bear's favor right now with these two uh, countries in Islam. Why do I have that at six? It should be at five. Oh, no, that's the number of fair good countries. The resources are, should be at five. There we go. That's what we have wrong. Okay. Um... So things are definitely looking up for Dancing Bear. Uh, you know, one thing Mooney has going for him and is he's still getting the card draws. He had a he had a bum hand last time. Overall weaker cards and a lot of them in the U.S.'s favor. So that was tough. I haven't looked at the cards that I've dealt out for the following turn. So, But uh, hopefully, you know, things tend to sway as the game goes on. This is one turn out of many. You just hope he gets some good cards for his sake. You know, we're not biased. Um... Hope he gets some good cards before she can seal the deal. Where could she seal the deal? I guess she could work in the Gulf states there and, you know, follow it up with maybe Saudi Arabia or Iraq. Um, you know, that that would do it right there, I think, because you need to have 12. Um, and that would be enough resources. He it, it definitely, the game could be over this next turn unless... Uh, Mooney can come up with something. Oh, he does get to put down a, some reaction markers. I forgot about that. So, where would he want to do that? I think he'd want to go in Somalia. Put one in Somalia. It's because of an event that um, that Dancing Bear played that was in his favor. She used the ops value, and he got to put down two reaction markers in Egypt or other countries. So... We'll go Somalia. I'll decide off camera so I can, can think about things and not be impetuous. Um, but we'll leave you with that. And we'll see you next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. I forget what even we're... Uh, is this English? Pasha? Rue? Something? Leg? But we're playing Labyrinth with the Awakening added on.